Hey, I'm Zach from Rise Against, and you're watching Fret 12. So essentially, with me, come over here, I have an old Marshall JMP, uh, 70s model. It had an old Brown Sound mod going on in the late 70s that everybody sort of did with the Eddie Van Halen uh, situation. Um, I had traded a guitar for it a long time ago. I had a new guy, a guy named Johnny Meyer, who's a guitar tech for Day to Remember and for Death Clock and uh, a bunch of other really cool things. He hot rodded it, wanted it out, so now it sounds somewhere between like a JCM 900 and a Mesa Boogie dual rectifier, triple rectifier or something. So it's really awesome. That's my main head. My backup head is a 900. Um, I really love the 900s. I, you know, when I was a kid, I was buying Marshalls in the 90s, and so that was the head you went to Guitar Center and bought. And uh, I never had a problem with it. Um, and they kind of get a lot of heat, you know, from people that are like, oh, 800 only, you know, whatever. So I love 800s too, but so that's my backup. Um, and so we go into, from out of there, we go into the radial JX44. Um, well, I'm sorry, actually, first of all, we're going to do a Furman. Um, we change things up a lot, too. So, And then the radial JX44 air control um, is just for the, uh, the, sh the channel switching, things like that, going back and forth between guitars. Uh, we have the Shure UR4D uh, wireless. Um, goes into, we control everything with this RJM music technology, the Mastermind GT. It's really awesome because it's sort of based on, I guess, what, like a Bob Bradshaw box situation where uh, you can program and you can do the different things with just regular effects pedals. You know, I didn't, now is the age of, of fractal FX and, you know, Kempers and things, and I think all that stuff is awesome. It's amazing, actually, but it's kind of beyond me. It's not beyond my guitar tech, Chef Bilson but it is, is beyond me. And uh, so I try to keep it as much just guitar, you know, Les Paul, Marshall, and stomp boxes. But this is a really cool way of, of being able to set the stomp boxes for certain things that I want to have on at certain times and don't want to have on. And the pedals, uh, it's all powered by Voodoo Lab Pedal Power 2 Plus. Um, the good people at MXR take very good care of us. <clears throat> and so, I had some boss and some things going on like that, but they came out with their versions of the pedals I was already using. So we used the Phase 90 for a lot of solos, actually, and I think that's just a holdover from Eddie Van Halen. You know, when you're a kid and you want to be Eddie Van Halen, you use a Phase 90, because he used a Phase 90. Um, the carbon copy, uh, analog delay, I think it's the best delay on the market, honestly. I, I don't really think you can beat the MXR carbon copy. Um, I have a... Uh, 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 Boss EQ, which this is new, but uh, kind of use that. Um, MXR Analog Chorus, uh, the MXR Overdrive, which would be kind of like their version of, I would think, like uh, uh, just any sort of the, the yellow Boss, you know, Super Overdrive pedal. And then a Tube Screamer, because no pedal is complete. We've just now gotten the Eventide uh, <clears throat> H9, and this thing, I think we're just scratching the surface of what this thing can do. It's kind of the most insane just stomp box on the market right now there's all these you you can program it you, it can do pretty much everything that every pedal on there can do we're using it for certain things because it's just a mind blower as far as everything it can do so it's just really awesome and they've been good to us about that as well um, <clears throat> this is the rjm switching uh, the unit for the pedal board that uh you know and another Furman. and so um so that's kind of the chain it's really simple you know, basically, like I said, it's just a Les Paul, it's Marshalls, and it's a bunch of stomp boxes. It's just a cool, tricky way of switching the stomp boxes, you know. Um, and like I said, I should get with the times and maybe go to a fractal or go to something like that. Everybody's been like, oh, you should tour, you're going to go for that. It definitely makes flying a lot easier. It makes touring a lot easier, which is what we do. But uh, I'm stubborn and kind of used to my old, my old ways. Oh, Jeff, where are we at with tubes? Um. This is Jeff Bilson, my my guitar tech, Hi, he's Jeff. amazing. I'm not sure what they threw in there. It's EL34, 12AX7, preamp tubes. I think they're Sovtech. I think we go with Sovtech on this one. Um, you know, some Russian tubes. And... Yeah. And oh, and, and he, he did, we, he added a resonance knob, which is really kind of a cool little addition. <laughs> it's kind of a cool little thing he did when he hot rodded it. Um, 
which was it seems to get lots of attention and like what does that do yeah, what and what does it do Jeff can answer that a little bit better than I can. It kind of, uh, it, it sounds to me like it's adding a, 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 like re, low end, some like kind of low end, but I don't know, it kind of just makes it a little more resonant. Yeah, it's something he added, you know, but again, it's, it looks just like a regular, you know, old classic JMP, but it's, uh, it's, it's with the times on the distortion. And he only, he would do a vintage amp, you know, it wasn't like, I'm not gonna hot rod a 900. I'm not gonna hot, you know, it's gotta be, not even, he was even kind of like iffy about an 800. He wanted a Plexi, he wanted a JMP, you know, he wanted that. So I was like, well, it just so turns out I actually have that. Um, also, we have, uh, this guy was hiding, I'm sorry. Um, we have a decimator, noise reduction, with the decimator, decimator two here, the ISP technologies. So uh, we kind of just leave that in there. You can't really see it um, because things get noisy, especially traveling in different places and, yeah, Tim's rig is pretty much, this is Tim's rig right next to mine, pretty similar. Uh, he has a 2000 and a 900 and just a, another a little assortment of pedals, but he's not here to speak to that right now. Um, so guitars, uh, we, one important thing and one thing Jeff is doing right now, we use, I've been using these uh, Evertune bridges. I don't know guys, if you guys know about these things, but they're like voodoo magic. Uh, we recorded with them and it seriously shaved off weeks of, you know, doing a take and then tuning between each take. Uh, it makes it to where um, you don't, it's not plugged in right now, but you can, you can bend a string and see how the, can you get that? The actual bridge piece itself adjusts. So now tuning is, a, is, is an adjustment basically. So it's in tune. This won't allow it to go out of tune. But you can also set, with the tuning heads, you can set it to bend. So I usually have my higher three strings when I do solos and things like that. I have that set to bend. I have the lower three strings set to not bend. Because if I want to get my Johnny Ramone on, and I'm going to pull sharp because I'm playing so hard, it's not pulling out of tune. So it's a really interesting concept. And uh, it's a genius named Cosmos Lyles, who we just had the pleasure of seeing the other day, invented it. And now uh, certain guitar companies, ESP, are making Evertune models and things like that. So we're using them, and I'm using these two Gibson um, Classic Customs. Um, that one has Seymour Duncan pickups. This one has lay sensor pickups. Um, kind of trying some different things out. But they both have the Evertune bridge, as you can see. Let's check out that bridge again. And this one is because it's a, the color. Of yeah. So when you're playing it, and when you do start to pull, does it loosen up the strings? So it doesn't it loosen up the string. You don't lose tension at all. How does it work? Uh, it's each, each, I'm the wrong guy to ask, but each bridge piece is on its own set of springs and trusses and pulleys. So it looks like a tremolo. And basically you have to route it out kind of like a tremolo situation. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of surgery. You know what I mean? It's cutting a huge hole out of the guitar basically. Um, but for live, it makes, you know, Chim and I both, you know, we play, it makes that sound like one guitar. There's no... There's no tuning issues anymore. We don't even have the white boss pedal on stage to go tune, and you know it doesn't. I don't go out of tune. It, it eliminates that problem, which is interesting. You get a lot of people go, "Oh, it's a low pull. You're cutting into it, whatever." But <clears throat> I definitely have my guitars that I collect and I keep at home, and then I have my guitars that I tour with, you know, and and those two guitars. And I like the classic customs as well because <clears throat> it's a Les Paul, but. Um, it's not the highest end Les Paul, you know what I mean? And I mess guitars up and we break them and I can put an Evertune in it and not really worry about it. I do, we do do one song in an alternate tune, Drop D is the first song, and I um, had the good people at Nash Guitars, if you've known Nash, for, um, they're more known for like um, Fender based, you know, Tele, Strats, things like that, but he'll also he is the best reliquer, you know, in that, that whole phenomenon going on right now. But I sent him this Les Paul and he relicked it out for me. So now it looks like it's a 57 or something. It was, this was a brand new Les Paul when I sent it to him. But it's, uh, it's Britton Nash up at Nash Guitars did this one for me, which of course you can see I did not ever tune. Uh, and I use it for one song, but it, it just been at my house for a while because Tim and I, we recorded the record with Evertune Bridges and like, let's use them on tour. And I'd already had this done and a gold top to be my main guitars. And I was like, ah. I'm not going to ever tune this, so I uh, brought it out just for one song, basically. So it's the first song in the set, I use a different guitar. 
but that's about it. And we use Ernie Ball strings, and they're great to us. Um, usually I run like a, I'll either go from a slinky top to a heavy bottom, like the 10 through 52s, or I'll do a 10 through 48 when, if I'm feeling, if I'm feeling a little, little different. And I also use, um, do we have any of my picks? I use those, they're a new thing from Dunlop called the Prime Tone, which is a, a synthetic tor tortoise shell. It's like the, apparently the best synthetic tortoise shell they make, and it's the rounded triangle, and it's got like a grip on it. And people freak out because you can't bend these at all. This is maybe a 1.25, 1.5. Okay, so and I'll I, anything 1.25, 1.5, 1.75, even 2. Point, I like really heavy picks, and I don't, I don't exactly know why. And I love this rounded triangle for what we do. There's a lot of downstroking for some reason that the trajectory of that just kind of throws it the right way. And I never really thought about it until. I got a hold of one of Kerry King's picks just from, I don't know how, and I had it in my pocket. I love Slayer and I love Kerry King. And so um, I used one at Soundcheck and I was like, oh my God, it was like this epiphany. This is amazing. Changer. Yeah, it was. And it, it really, I, you know, to me, it improved everything. So now I use, I use these, which is probably just one of those really idiosyncratic things that, you know, you get superstitious about your playing. You're know, like, I have to have this pick, you know, whatever. So. But again, Dunlop and MXR people, very good to us, and so they take care of us. So that's kind of it. It's not that crazy interesting. My cabinets are over here. Just two simple vintage 1960 straight, uh, straight cabs, B cabs. Nothing special. There's no added you know, uh, speaker cones or, or anything. So uh, we just got those from the good people at Marshall as well. They took care of us with that. And, uh, they sound great, you know, there was really no reason to change out the speakers or anything else. We're not really tinkers that much, you know, outside of the Evertune Bridge, that's kind of the, our, our one thing that we're sort of spear, trying to spear it a bit, but everything else we kind of keep simple. It's sort of that ethos of like, you know, we were in vans and playing clubs and doing that stuff a lot longer than we've been doing this. So it was really the idea of like, maybe a pedal board and a head or pushing in your half stack and a guitar. And it's kind of hard to break that mindset when that's, you did that for so long. So even now that you, know, you get the chance to sort of work with companies and have some money to buy some things that you need, I still can't force myself to do anything. You know. Also, fortunately, we've had the good, the good luck of meeting Tom Morello and seeing what he does with his rig, you just, even for what we have, which is basically you know, not much, you see what he does with his, you're like, all right, I need to I need to figure my stuff out a little bit more before I move on. So, yeah, that's basically it. A little little boring, but uh, I guess I guess that's us. Anymore.